Thanks to Electrally on the Clay forums for putting out a guide on this. It really helped my understanding of fishing as a mechanic and the various intricacies of it. So shoutouts to them. Fishing in this game on its surface seems pretty straightforward and simple, but there's a lot that goes on under the surface that I think is worth going into. First and foremost, let's go over the first type of fishing, the kind in ponds, that being in the mainland where there are ponds scattered throughout the world, and these yield in freshwater fish. In the caves, you can find blue ponds that will yield in eels, and fishing in these ponds is pretty easy, all things considered. You just use a freshwater fishing rod, cast the rod, and once you get a bite, right click to hook the fish and right click again to reel it in. That's all there is to know about fishing on the mainland, but you know, that's just something that I wanted to cover to get out of the way. Ocean fishing is a mechanic that most players tend to ignore, and something that the community seems pretty unfamiliar with, all things considered. And admittedly, I was pretty unfamiliar with the intricacies of it as well, but hopefully I could clarify some of the finer details. In order to start fishing in the ocean, you're going to need a sea fishing rod, and it differs from the freshwater rod in that you're able to put tackles and lures on the sea fishing rod, and it can only be used in the ocean. I do want to quickly go over what I tend to stick on a boat when I go out fishing for certain fish, just to give an idea of what being prepared means to me in terms of boating and fishing. Naturally, you're going to want a boat, obviously, and a fire pit. A fire pit won't spread fires, but provide warmth and a good light radius. Next, I tend to have an icebox on my boat so that I can stick food and thermal stones in it to extend my time out on the ocean if I'm going summer fishing. After that, I'll choose to add a lightning rod if I'm going to do fishing in the spring, and you're definitely going to want a tin fishing bin. None of these structures can catch fire, so the only thing you're going to need to worry about is the boat itself. If you're doing fishing in the summer in a world with wildfires enabled, I'd highly recommend bringing a watering can with you, just in case of any surprise fires that happen on your boat. Lastly, you're going to want to bring driftwood to craft oars, or logs if you're inclined in that direction, but you know, driftwood is just kind of better. I try not to have a boat mast or anything fancy like that when I'm fishing, since in my experience, if I'm loitering in certain areas to fish, then they're more trouble than they're worth, due to potentially catching fire and the existence of Levy Jones. A minimalistic approach is one that I take when it comes to fishing. I'd highly recommend having a miner's hat for this, by the way, since if you're fishing, you can swap out your hat, but you can't move or swap your equip slot item. Otherwise, your line will snap and the fish will leave. Now that we've covered up the basics of our boat, let's move on to the meat and potatoes of the video, which is ocean fishing itself. You make most of what I'm about to mention at a tackle receptacle, which requires bone shards, driftwood, and electrical doodad at an alchemy engine. Next, I'm going to explain what you actually do in order to fish. In order to initiate fishing, you just need to cast the fishing rod until a fish bites onto it. Once the fish latches onto it, you need to right click or whatever the controller equivalent is, and then watch your character closely. There are three stages your character will go through while catching a fish. The relaxed stage is pretty rare to get for the most part since you basically need to be physically moving closer to the fish while simultaneously reeling it in in order to get to this stage. Your character will hold the fishing rod basically horizontally at this stage and you can reel in fish non-stop. You don't really have to worry about the fish fighting back at this point since it's just easy sailing. The reeling stage is the middle stage where the fish is swimming towards you or isn't swimming directly against you. This is when you should be reeling in the fish with the knowledge that the fish can and will eventually fight back, risking you snapping the line. You should watch yourself and the fish for when your character starts struggling, or when the fish turns around and swims away from you. In either case, you should stop reeling in the fish and wait for it to stop struggling before you try to reel it back. The strained stage is where the fish is actively struggling against you and swimming away. There's nothing you could really do while you're strained. If you keep reeling it in, the line will snap and the fish will despawn, and it'll take away your lures and your floats. Fish do have stamina, so even if it feels like you're not making any progress, while it's strained, its stamina will go down and revert back to the reeling stage eventually. In this stage, you just have to wait it out, so just keep that in mind. Going on to floats, the main purpose of them is to boost how accurately and how far you can cast your rod. This can be useful for catching fish that are far away from your boat, or to try and catch fish that are swimming away if you're on a time crunch. I'd recommend you just move your boat closer to the fish you're trying to catch though, since it doesn't take that much of a commitment to do so. Floats in my experience don't really matter all too much, you can easily get away with just using a twig as your primary means. If you want to get fancier than this, then there's always the boss floats, which include the Malbatross and the Moose Goose floats that are made using their feathers, and have both the highest range and accuracy of any other float. But as far as floats in general go, you have a couple options. The wooden ball isn't too much better than using a twig, it's about as cheap, only needing one log to make. The slip bobber, let's call it, isn't much better. It requires driftwood to make and it only increases its range, not really its accuracy, so in my opinion, not really worth using. 
you can use the hardened rubber bung trinket, which has a lot more range than the twig, but doesn't really influence its accuracy all too much. The feather floats are more accurate than the other floats, but only have as much range as the ball. In my opinion, if you're going to use something that isn't a stick, you should just use this, just because all it requires for you to make is a feather from any of the main birds. And the aforementioned albatross and moose goose float have the best range and accuracy overall, so if you have extra feathers, then just go ahead and commit to it. It's not like you're going to use a single malbatross or moose goose feather on anything else anyways. But moving on, let's get into the bulk of fishing, which is the lures. Lures can be divided in two categories, reusable lures and consumable lures. Each lure has its own charm percent and an associated reel bonus to it, and the charm influences how likely fish are to latch onto it. The reel bonus will either add or subtract its appeal to fish while you're actively reeling it in. We'll start by going into the consumable lures. All the consumable lures have a minus 30% reel bonus, so keep that in mind moving forward. You can use rot, which gives 10% charm, seeds, which give 20% charm, berries and juicy berries, which both give 30% charm, and figs, which give you 50% charms. Depending on the fish, each one will prefer some over the others, so I will be covering that later on in the video. But if you're going to be fishing with these, make sure you have a handful. For me, a safe amount is typically 10. So just make sure you have enough bait to catch the thing that you want. Reusable lures are more out of the way to get, but they have the added appeal of being more reusable. There are three types of reusable lures. Spoons, which are capable of attracting most fish with the exception of popperfish and flounder, and also the bloomfin tuna. They're all equally as good as one another, but are limited to their respective time of day. That being sunrise, dusky, and night flyer, preferring daytime, dusk, and night. The bent spork works as a lure and works at all times, not really locked into the time of day. Spoons in general have a second lowest chance of getting fish to bite of all the reusable lures, as they only give you a 20% charm and 30% reel bonus. Spinnerbait is overall the strongest bait you can use, but they only attract large fish. They're equally as good, but also locked to their respective time of day, similar to the, how the spoons work. And they're better used in deeper oceans, as well as for wobsters. These have a 40% charm and 40% reel bonus. Now, Pearl's lures all have unique special properties that set them apart from each other, but all of them can attract most any other kind of fish. So keep that in mind moving forward. But all of them can attract any kinds of fish. The stupefying lure hooks fish under any condition, but the chance of hooking any fish is the lowest of all the reusable lures. The bonus is that the fish gets tired more quickly, making it stronger against fish like corn cods and black catfish, who have high stamina. This only has a 10% charm, but a 30% real bonus. The snow day and rainy day lure are about as good as spinnerbait, even during rain and snow, both of which diminish the effects of the lures. This has a 30% charm and 50% real bonus. And lastly, the heavy weighted lure, which is sort of strong. It attracts only the heaviest 20% of the any fish species, and it has 50% charm, but 0% reel bonus. So you're not going to get anything out of it while you're reeling it in. Most of the time, you're going to want to use what's available to you. Rot, seeds, and berries are pretty nice, since all you need to get them as bait is an already established food supply that you can just dip into. But you should keep in mind that they also do have the lowest chances of fish biting them. That's the long and short of fishing mechanics, so now we'll go over general fishing advice. As far as fishing goes, you can't really go wrong with shoals. Shoals have icons on the maps, which just have bundles of fish in them. If you're fishing with the intent of catching and eating them, you'll find success here more than anywhere else. Keep in mind that Malbatross will spawn if you fish too much at these shoals. But you can always just sail away from Malbatross as soon as you see it. If you're trying to catch a specific type of fish, however, that's a more complicated ordeal. The wiki has a whole table that's pretty hard to read, if you ask me, but I'll break down each fish and what the quote-unquote best bait is, as far as the ones each fish prefers. As well as just what I'd recommend if it's different than the quote-unquote best bait. Keep in mind that most of the options will be the same, reusable lures tend to be universally applicable. So I'll recommend the better of the spoon slash spinner baits, but keep in mind that if you have them, Pearl's lures should be the things you default to, as a general rule of thumb. The Runty Guppy, Needle Nose Squirt, and Smolt Fry all share the same stat line insofar as bait attraction goes. The spoons are the best options in this case, just make sure you use the appropriate timed one. And what I'd recommend you use is berries. Since berries have the standard bait modifier and are easily accessible, I'd recommend you just cast on the group of fish. Then if they don't bite after they kind of circle around it a little bit, reel it back and cast the line again to reset the chances. 
just repeat until you've caught all the ones that you want. That's usually how I go about fishing at least, but you can definitely play it a bit more patiently if you want. Mudfish, Black Catfish, Dappled Koi, Golden Koi, and Ice Breams all have the same attraction modifiers. The Spinnerfish Bait is the best option since it just has a higher charm to it. I'd say the most important of these fish is the Ice Bream in my opinion, since it also has the added benefit of working as a cold thermal stone which is amazing for wort, but they are seasonal, so you can only catch these in winter. The Koi are also pretty interesting cases as they only appear during the New Year's events, so there's a solid chance that you just don't even encounter these. The Bitty Baitfish and Scorching Sunfish. The spoons are the best options for these two, I'd recommend using Rot for these since Rot is the best option overall, in my opinion, since it's quick and easy to get, and the fish not only like rot, but dislike seeds, berries, and figs as bait, so those are actually less reliable in this situation. The sunfish is definitely the high point here for the same reason as the ice creams, but arguably more useful since it works in winter and works longer due to things spoiling less in winter overall. Keep in mind that sunfish are the summer's seasonal fish, so they'll only appear during summer. For deep bass and dandy lionfish, Spoons and spinnerbaits are both equally as useful for these two, so use whichever one you have handy. These fish are tough to recommend for since they all dislike consumable bait that you'd normally have on hand at any given point in time. If you do have to use consumable bait, rot is your best option for these since they only mildly dislike it. Popperfish, fall lounder, bloomfin tuna, and spittlefish all share the same stat line. The best bait for these are actually some of the more consumable lures, since seeds, berries, and figs are the preferred bait for them. I'd recommend you use the consumable ones just because they're really easy to get and it's just value overall. They actually dislike the spoons and the spinner bait, so I wouldn't recommend using it against them. As a side note, the spittlefish is used in a couple recipes, but they all mostly suck, if I'm being real. The fall lounder and bloomfin tuna are also the seasonal bloomfish being locked to fall for the fall lounder and spring for the bloomfin tuna. Just as a little side note, I do absolutely love the bloomfin tuna's examine quotes for Weber and Wendy. Go check them out if you haven't already, but it's really cute. You know, probably my favorite non-thermal fish for that reason alone. Corn cod has the same attractions as the previous mentioned one. Use seeds, berries, or figs since they're attracted to it more. The only difference is corn cods actually only kind of dislike spoons instead of hating them. As far as Wobsters and Lunar Wobsters go, you can use most anything for these guys, just not seeds. They have the same attraction modifier across the board, so you should just use whatever you have on hand, preferably something that you could reuse so that you maximize what you get out of it. Swedish fish are highly recommended that you use figs or berries for, since their attraction modifier for these are higher than any other attraction modifier on any other fish. They do dislike rot seeds and spoons, and they absolutely hate spinnerbait though. There is a detailed guide on how fishing works, and what baits I'd recommend you use, hopefully it helped out. Admittedly, there is quite a bit I left out, such as where you can find the fish, the ocean trawler, and more, but I wanted to make a good enough guide that I didn't just lay out every small bit of information that loosely relates to fishing. But overall, this was a pretty eye-opening guide to how complicated fishing was. Prior to this, I wasn't really sure how fishing worked, if I'm being honest. I'd usually just gun for the sunfish and ice cream since I found those two to be the most worthwhile. But now I definitely feel more confident in fishing as an option. But that's all I really wanted to cover. Remember to like the video if you found it helpful, subscribe if you enjoy the content, and let me know what you guys think about fishing in the comments. Thank you again Electorly for the amazing fishing guide. I'll be linking his post to the forums, and definitely be sure to check it out. But that's all I wanted to talk about, so until next time. Bye-bye. Uh,